South Florida's news station, WSVN7. The following is a rebroadcast of Channel 7 News at 10, seen earlier tonight. Live from Channel 7, South Florida's news station. Sally Fitz. Steve Dawson. Crime Check with Rick Sanchez. Meteorologist Bob Soper. And Sports with Jim Barry. This is Channel 7 News at 10. An explosion and ammonia leak keep Broward firefighters at work tonight and residents out of their homes. Good evening, I'm Joan Lovett sitting in for Steve. For the last five hours, it has been anything but a quiet night in one Broward neighborhood. An ammonia explosion and leak is keeping a lot of people out of their homes tonight. It happened at the Coca-Cola bottling plant in Pembroke Park late this afternoon. Only one man was injured, but dangerous ammonia gas was released and firefighters are still working to contain it. The gas making it a tense situation. Channel 7's Rick Leventhal joins us live from the scene right now with more, Rick. Sally, it's a much calmer scene here now tonight. The uh, situation has calmed down quite a bit. The hazardous materials unit from the Broward Fire Department is still inside this Coca-Cola plant, but they believe they have ventilated all of that dangerous ammonia gas out of the plant. Now, they are still inside. They're making one more check through the plant to make sure that ammonia is gone and that there's no more danger of explosions. But earlier today, when those firefighters arrived on the scene, it was a lot more hectic, and you could smell the ammonia in the air. At this time, the only thing we know is they were attempting to either shut a valve down or open the valve. Firefighters believe that's what started an ammonia leak inside this Coca-Cola plant, which led to what's being called a minor explosion. One employee was burned on the arm. The rest were evacuated. Fearful of more explosions, eastbound traffic was blocked on Pembroke Road in the middle of rush hour, creating a tremendous traffic jam. The fire department's hazardous materials team then went to work, trying to put a lid on the dangerous and toxic ammonia gas. I'm told by the experts that it's extremely dangerous when you're in close contact with it. It can cause uh, burns on the skin and it's uh, toxic when it's breathed. While the hazardous materials teams were working to try and contain the ammonia and figure out a way to get rid of it, residents of a trailer park next door were being told to evacuate their homes. Well, I'm going to get my dog and get out of here uh, before, before, so that at least until after the cloud disperses. I understand it's contained in the building now at this time, so. You're not taking any chances? No, I'm going to get out of here <laughs> as soon as you guys let me go. <laughs> Well, we did let Tony go, but by now he's probably back home because police have let residents return to their homes. As for the victim, he is a Coca-Cola employee. He did receive first-degree burns on his forearm, but people here say he's doing okay tonight. And as for the plant, well, as soon as these firefighters give the okay, the uh, plant is open for business, and in fact, there's a late shift that may return for work tonight. Sally, back to you. All right, well, that's good news. Thank you. Rick Leventhal reporting from Pembroke Park. And we can tell you that hazardous material crews are responding right now to what may be another ammonia leak. A hazardous materials team called Hazmat and Fire Crews are heading for the area of Northeast 187th and 67th Avenue in Dade County. All we know right now is that an ammonia leak has been reported in that area, apparently liquid ammonia leaking from the Southeast Frozen Foods Company. We have our own news crew on the way to the scene and we'll go to them for a live report just as soon as we can. Joan? A horrifying discovery today for an Eastern Airlines ground crew as they opened a fold-down stairway in the rear of a jet that had landed in Miami from Barbados. They found the body of a teenage stowaway. Police say the 17-year-old boy was in a part of the plane that he is not pressurized or heated during flights and that the teen may have died from lack of oxygen or from freezing to death. They are now waiting for an autopsy to be sure. The identity of the stowaway is being withheld until his family is notified.
Tonight we are getting reports of widespread damage in Australia after a major earthquake on that country's southeast coast. Channel 7's Jane Acree has been following the story. She joins us now live from the satellite news desk. Jane? Joan, that quake hit the city of Newcastle, which is roughly 70 miles northeast of the uh, city of Sydney on the very heavily populated east coast of Australia. At least one person was killed and dozens more hurt in that tremor, which measured 5.5 on the Richter scale. Hundreds of thousands of homes are reportedly without utilities right now. Many people have been asked to evacuate, and some homes have been destroyed. Authorities are very concerned that there will be some major aftershocks rocking through the area. We have just received some pictures from Australia. We'll be bringing them to you a little later on in this newscast. Back to you now, Joan. All right. Thank you, Jane. Also tonight, a small earthquake has shaken Southern California near San Bernardino. The tremor measured 3.2 on the Richter scale, but so far... No damage or injuries are being reported. Tonight, no. Miami police are baffled by the case of a missing person, and they're asking for your help. It is an unusual case because the missing person is a 45-year-old stockbroker. Channel 7's Crime Task Force is working on the story, and Jeff Michael joins us live from Miami with more on this one. Jeff? Sally, we are in downtown Miami, not far from where George Kinzel works up at Smith Barney Brokerage House. This is a man who defines the word stable, according to his friends and his co-workers. As far as his personal life goes, he is considered inseparable from his wife. Professionally, everything has been going well. The market has been good for George Kinzel. He's been very, very successful. All the more reason that this has both his friends and his family not only baffled, but scared. Everyone here at Smith Barney knows George Kinzel's face. He's been a stockbroker here since 1977. And for those 12 years, he's built a reputation for being a man of habit. On almost every count, predictable. When I say he's a creature of habit, I mean, he's, everyone knows exactly what George is going to do at, at, at any given time in the day. That's why this is so completely out of character. And Tuesday, George Kinzel's routine was decidedly interrupted. At about 20 minutes after 11, Tuesday morning, Kinzel telephoned his wife from his office. He told her he was going to take his car to a mechanic to get some transmission work done. Ten minutes later, the 46-year-old was in the elevator, heading down to the underground garage where his car was parked. Police believe he was possibly heading to the corner of Southwest 12th Avenue and 8th Street. He never made it. Back at his office, co-workers are looking for anything that could give a hint of Kinzel's whereabouts. Friends are certain he planned to come back. They say he never would have left his briefcase behind if he hadn't. His desk has been searched. His client list gone over stock by stock to see if a large loss or withdrawal had been made. We can't find anything out of place. We don't see any clients who have lost money. Uh, we don't see any large uh, withdrawals out of the account. So it really was not helpful in solving what may have happened or was someone who was a client of George's possibly involved in his disappearance. Again, we are not talking about a man devoted to whim. This was a man so predictable, he called his wife every day at about 11.45, always had lunch at the same place or brought his lunch in. This is something truly baffling police as well. But police have one thing going for them. They're not just looking for the man who possibly, or the perpetrators or kidnappers, whomever might be involved in this crime. They have a picture of George Kinzel himself. You saw the picture already on the air. We're going to have more not only on his description, but on the car he was driving from Channel 7's Ralph Page in our Crime Task Force office. And that should help Ralph in locating Mr. Kinzel. Jeff, police departments receive thousands of calls a year about missing persons. Most of the time it's because that individual does not want to be found. They've walked away themselves. In this case, the police have come to us. Obviously, they think it's something more serious. Let's take a look at George Kinzel again. He is 6 foot, 190 pounds. He has salt and pepper hair, hazel green eyes, and he wears dark prescription glasses. Dark prescription glasses. The car he was driving when he left the office is a car he drove every day. It was a BMW. It's silver gray. Four door. The tag number on the car is 169KDD. That's 169KDD. His whereabouts is unknown. They know he left the car, left the garage with the car. He was supposed to go get the car repaired, possibly had a problem with the transmission. That's the last anybody's ever heard of him. If you saw the car, if you have any information on George Kinzel, this is the number to call. Miami Police Department at 579 6619. That's 579 6619. One nine. If you work in that Brickell Avenue area, search your minds. You may know something. So.
Strange story. All right. Thank you, Ralph and Jeff. A Metro-Dade police officer is in satisfactory condition tonight after shooting himself with his own gun. As we first told you last night on Crime Check here on Channel 7 News at 10, 32-year-old Valentin Gomez was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital last night moments after shooting himself in the leg. The accident happened at the K-9 unit headquarters in Opelika at the airport there. Police say the gun went off when Gomez was putting it back in his holster. Officers are calling the shooting accidental, but they are still investigating. This weekend's big chill is turning up the heat on Florida power and light. State and federal regulators are now looking into the blackouts caused by the cold temperatures. They want to know who is to blame. FPNL shut off power on a rotating basis in many South Florida neighborhoods. Thousands were then left without power for hours on Christmas Day and beyond. FPNL says record electrical use forced them to do that. But angry customers say the company is to blame. The Public Service Commission is studying the incident to see if it can be prevented in the future. Well, high power bills are not the only reminder of the cold snap. Severe damage has been done to the winter citrus and vegetable crop, meaning higher prices for all of us. The cost of orange juice and some other fruits has already gone up. Experts say consumers can expect the price hikes to last at least several months. Is there any country in the world willing to take Manuel Noriega? Well, tonight, Channel 7 sources inside the State Department say that a deal may be, again, may be in the works to send Noriega to the Dominican Republic. That unconfirmed information says that if a deal is struck, Panama's former dictator would head to the Dominican Republic. Sources don't say when or how. But right now, Noriega is still a hold up in the Vatican Embassy in Panama City, and American troops surrounding that embassy are apparently doing their best to make his life miserable. Channel 7 senior reporter Mark Ludner sent us this late report by satellite from Panama just over an hour ago. Noriega is spending his fourth night in the papal embassy. His company, Vatican diplomats inside, and U.S. troops outside. <laughs> Those troops blasted rock and roll Noriega's way for a good part of today. The army wouldn't call it psychological warfare, but the deafening sound stayed on for hours. This followed a busy night in which U.S. troops shot out streetlights and moved soldiers around the embassy, apparently thinking Noriega could be on the move. Today, new President Guillermo Endara rejected notions that Noriega is anything but a common criminal. We believe that General Noriega's crimes are not political. They are the common, he's a common criminal of the worst kind. There are other stories here. Stories like Panama's gradual return to normalcy. Stories like attempts to crack down on looters. We witnessed this arrest by U.S. soldiers late this afternoon. But as long as General Noriega remains under American siege, the Vatican Embassy will remain the focal point of attention here. Mark Lunder, Channel 7 News, Panama City. And another new development about Panama tonight. A leftist guerrilla group is threatening violence against American companies in Colombia in revenge for the invasion of Panama. The guerrillas are threatening terrorist attacks against American companies. The six guerrilla groups in Colombia have at least 10,000 members. Well, some South Florida Army reservists may be soon getting a first-hand look at Panama. Volunteers from units right here in South Florida and the Florida Panhandle are going to be shipped out to Panama tomorrow. The military isn't saying how many soldiers will be going, and it isn't releasing their names for security reasons. The troops will help the country restore its civilian government. Joan? The fighting has left many Panamanians in desperate need of vital supplies, and tonight South Florida is reaching out to help. Volunteers in Coral Gables are loading up food and medicine for Panama. For the past two days, Spanish language radio station WQBA has appealed to its listeners for help, and it's paying off tonight. Thousands of pounds of supplies came pouring in today from our community, and they will head out early tomorrow. Miami Herald trucks will take those supplies to the airport. And then an eastern jet is scheduled to fly the supplies to Panama tomorrow morning. When Saudi Arabian Prince Al Fassi moved back to South Florida just last month, he opened his doors to dozens of feline friends. He claims he's making a feline mecca out of his Miami Beach mansion, a place where homeless cats can be taken care of. But as Channel 7's Brooke Bradley shows us tonight, animal rights advocates say the prince is no cat crusader. They're calling him a cat abuser. 
Don't do that! Tempers are flaring in this usually quiet upscale neighborhood. The reason is Prince Alfazi's 100 plus cats. This neighbor says she doesn't appreciate animal rights groups who continue to come into her neighborhood every night to feed the animals. But the animal lovers say if they don't feed the prince's cats, many of them will go hungry. In my opinion, no, they're not being fed. And from what I've seen, the two times that I was allowed in the gate a couple of weeks ago, they had approximately six to ten cans of cat food for a hundred cats. That's not enough. Jackie Lassiter recently met with Prince Alfazi to talk about the cats. She was so alarmed with what she says were appalling conditions that she reported the prince to the head of her organization. Marion Lentz talked to a member of Prince Alfazi's staff who says the cats are being well cared for. He told me that they have a full-time veterinarian on staff, but he would not let me speak to the veterinarian, nor would he give me the veterinarian's name. But this vet tells us he's the only doctor who's seen the cats, and he says he's seen them only twice. The last time was for a late-night emergency call, a call which he says Al Fazi still owes him $200 for. I asked if he had vaccinated the ones that were there, the ones that were already old enough to be vaccinated. He said all the vaccinations were taken care of. Uh, I never saw any papers on this. We made repeated attempts to try to talk to the person on Al Fazi's staff who deals with the cats or to talk to the prince himself, but we were not successful. But the guard at the gate says the cats are getting proper care. Probably, you could probably uh, get a shot of the food and all their uh, dishes and everything right there. You know, there's food put out, there's boxes of uh, cat food and everything. But animal rights advocates are not satisfied with the setup here, saying it's not the feline version of Mecca Al Fazi promised. It doesn't sound like a kitty nirvana to me. It sounds like a publicity stunt. It may be the kind of publicity the prince didn't bargain for. In Miami, Brooke Bradley, Channel 7 News. Well, the people who are feeding the cats tonight say this isn't a permanent solution. They worry over the fate of most of those cats, claiming they'll probably wind up being put to sleep. And the prince says he was trying to rescue them from that very same fate. Joan? Coming up next, we will have a live report from Rick Sanchez, who was on the scene of a second ammonia leak tonight. And then they were just trying to enjoy a vacation, and instead, their lives will never be the same. An exclusive report is next. And a Broward man, wrongly accused of kidnapping his own daughter, talks about his terrible ordeal. If you could live inside a teenager suffering emotionally, you'd understand the overwhelming sadness. I can't do anything right. The crushing loneliness. It's always my fault. The paralyzing fear. I don't want to, okay? And you would know that inside... It's just not worth it. He's desperately crying for help. Call Charter Hospital of Miami, 591-3230. If you don't get help at Charter, please get help somewhere. Raycom Sports and Entertainment presents the Liberty Bowl, one of college football's most prestigious events. The 31st Liberty Bowl features the high-powered wishbone attack of the Air Force Academy, led by Heisman candidate D. Dallas, against the aerial assault of the Ole Miss Rebels and their record-setting quarterback, John Darnell. Don't miss any of the pageantry and excitement of one of the most elaborate halftime shows of the holiday bowl season. It's the 31st Liberty Bowl, live from Memphis, Tennessee. The Liberty Bowl, live Thursday at 8 on WSBN 7. Florida Lottery players, here are tonight's Cash 3 winning lottery numbers. Are you ready? Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. It's profound. Once in a while, you gotta smell the flowers, even if they are plastic. You. <laughs> it's wise. You're nothing without me. <laughs> and on the next Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, it's an all-star lineup with B. Arthur from the Golden Girls, the incredible Angie Dickinson, and the man with the wonderful life, the legendary Jimmy Stewart. Live, Regis and Kathy Lee, tomorrow morning at 9 on WSVN 7. Hi, I'm Bob Soper. 
This year, New Year's Eve explodes with excitement in Fort Lauderdale, and you won't want to miss it. WSVN is thrilled to present Light Up Lauderdale, a dazzling celebration filled with lights, lasers, music, and entertainment, featuring renowned jazz artist Nestor Torres and others. There'll be rides, games, plenty of food, and lots of fun, and it all happens New Year's Eve at Bouvier Park in downtown Fort Lauderdale. I'll be there along with Florida Lottery and other sponsors, so plan to come out and join in the fun as WSVN lights up Lauderdale. Earlier, we told you about an ammonia leak at a Coca-Cola bottling plant in Broward in Pembroke Park. Well, now, officials are working another ammonia leak, this one in Dade County at 187th and 6th Avenue. Rick Sanchez is on the scene there, and let's go to him to find out how bad this one is. Rick? All right, Sally. Right now, it's not very bad. We're on 187th Street, Northeast 6th Avenue, as you may have mentioned. It's an ammonia leak, and that can be potentially very dangerous, but right now, they're saying it's a small leak. They're waiting for some of the engineers to get here to see if they can possibly shut off the leak by either shutting off a valve. We don't know at this point if it's in a storage tank. We do know it's behind the building, the white building. You may be able to see over the firefighters' heads over there. They have a hazmat team here now. That's hazardous material trying to find out just how bad the leak is and what could possibly be done to stop it. Joining me now, Chief Nelson Bradshaw with Hazardous Med Metro Dade Fire Department. What is the danger of the ammonia? Well, it's uh, flammable. It's also very toxic. Uh, uh, right now, there's no danger. There's no one around here. It's leaking from a pipe about 20, 25 feet in the air, and it's forming a very small pool of uh, gas in the ground. Uh, again, though, ammonia in and of itself, as in liquid form, is not dangerous until it turns into a gaseous form? Well, it's dangerous in both, but you don't usually see it in liquid form. It's under pressure, but once it's released from pressure, it turns into a gas. And it's very toxic and also flammable. So the worst case scenario is that the leak continues, gets even bigger, or blows. But right now, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I'm not worried about it blowing. The, the worst thing could happen if it, if the leak expanded to where the gas uh, would spread to a large area, we'd have to evacuate. But I don't see that happening. All right, Chief Nelson Bradshaw, thank you, sir, for taking time out to talk to us. Again, uh, Hazmat Materials uh, officials on the scene right now, firefighters on the scene, and police officers, the Metro Dade Police Department, cordoning off 6th Avenue all the way from 187th to 189th. We'll stand by and see what happens, Sally. Is that the, this at the Southeast Frozen Foods Company, Rick? We it, talked about that earlier, and I wonder if that's still the case. I haven't gotten the first name of the company, but it certainly is a frozen foods company, Sally. All right, well, we'll check back with you a little bit later on that. Rick Sanchez reporting. Uh, from a hazardous le leak at 187th and 6th Avenue. Joan. An unfortunate mistake in judgment. That's what police in Jamaica tonight are calling the unprovoked shootings of two American women in Montego Bay on Christmas morning. The women were shot from behind without warning by a man who was supposed to be there to protect them, the security guard at the villa where they were staying on vacation. And as Channel 7's Brian Cabell shows us in this exclusive report, the shootings had a tragic result. One of the young women is now paralyzed. 18-year-old Samantha Schreiber graduated Palmetto High School six months ago. She's been attending Dade Community College with hopes of becoming a paramedic. Those hopes have now been dashed. It happened at this plush villa in Montego Bay early Christmas morning. Samantha and her cousin were walking by the pool at 2 a.m. I heard something that sounded like fireworks. And the reason I triggered fireworks to me is because it was Christmas Eve and it kind of made sense at the time in my mind. And I looked at her, I said, see the fireworks. And she looked and I remember her smiling for a second. And next thing I knew, she hit the ground and she said, I was shot. Michelle herself was shot in the arm, but Samantha was shot in the spine, mistakenly by the security guard, as it turned out. And he's holding her up and the blood was all over her. They managed to lay Samantha in a chaise lounge and then called for an ambulance, but the ambulance never arrived. So they picked up the chaise lounge, put it in the back of a station wagon, and drove 20 miles to the local hospital. But the hospital was unequipped for such an emergency. The nightmare lasted another nine hours before the air ambulance from Miami finally arrived. She was taken to Mount Sinai Hospital in Miami Beach, where she remains in intensive care. And uh, she, at this moment, has uh, no use of uh, any, of, any of the limbs, and, and she can't talk. Her family is now communicating with her through the use of letters on a sheet of paper. They can't understand why an innocent 18-year-old girl became a target of a security guard, and worse, why the gunman has been excused for a, quote, simple and tragic mistake in judgment. Brian Cabell, Channel 7 News. 
The Jamaica government police say the investigation in the case remains open, but as of now, no charges have been filed against the security guard. They say it's because he did not shoot the young women with evil intent. A Broward father has been acquitted of kidnapping his infant daughter. He's out of jail tonight telling his side of the story. Alan Ray Hooten admits he took his daughter away from her mother in Broward last year, but he says it was because he felt the child was being abused. He fled to Kentucky where police captured him and charged him with child abuse. Those charges were eventually dropped and Hooten says he did what he had to do to take Take care of his daughter. daughter. You do this, you do that. You know, they had the can't call. They beat me to the floor. In front of his daughter. daughter. And all I did was look at her with tears in her eyes. Knowing what I gave up. I mean, I even put on my watch for $10 so I could buy a box of diapers for $9.95. Did you tell Putin was acquitted yesterday of kidnapping the girl from her mother. And tonight, the girl is once again in her mother's custody, and Hooten is fighting for visitation rights. We told you earlier about an earthquake in Australia. Well, now late pictures of the damage are coming in. Let's go to Jane Acri at the Satellite News Desk with the latest. Jane? Joan, it's an all-out emergency tonight in the mining and industrial town of New, uh, Newcastle, Australia, where there has been a major earthquake tonight. That quake measuring 5.5 on the Richter scale. It has demolished several homes, banks, and stores, and some people are still thought to be trapped inside. So far, the latest tally, four deaths, dozens of injuries, hundreds of thousands of homes are reported to be without utilities and water. The big fear tonight are the aftershocks, which almost always shake an uh, area after a major quake. Newcastle lies about 125 miles northeast of Sydney on Australia's very heavily populated east coast. The epicenter of that quake thought to be about 50 miles away. That's the very latest from the satellite news desk on that major quake to hit Australia tonight. Joan? All right. Thank you, Jane. Channel 7's Jane Acri from the satellite news desk. Just ahead on Channel 7 News, drug dealers are closing up shop now that a special police team has moved into the neighborhood. We will have the exclusive story in our special report, Clean Sweep. And later, Nadia says she's not having an affair with a married man. But was that married man anywhere near his wife and four kids Christmas Day? The answer coming up. I'm health specialist Marilyn Mitzel. Deadly mistakes during laser surgery. That story is in tonight's HealthCast. We do it for you. You, the people who have made Channel 7 News the most watched news. You, the people of South Florida. We made changes. Lots of changes. Changes for the better. Changes to bring you the best news. Changes for the better. After all, we do it for you. Who else you gonna watch? The champions, the challengers, the game, Thank you. the host, the shake, the showdown, the thrill, the excitement, the fans, the fun. The Feud. Family Feud. Weeknights at 7.30 on WSBN 7. If you smoke while you're pregnant, the joy of motherhood could be rather short-lived. Well, some deadly mistakes are being reported involving laser surgery, and that story tops tonight's health cast. Our health specialist, Marilyn Mitzel, is here to explain and tell us about this. Um, Marilyn. A very interesting story. Despite advances in laser surgery, some tragic accidents have occurred in one type of operation. Four women died following laser surgery to remove the lining of their uterus. All died of a heart attack caused by gas bubbles. They can form when doctors use gas cooling lasers during the operation. Now experts say laser surgery can still be done in the uterus without this risk so long as the doctor does not use gas cooling lasers. Researchers in Boston are making progress with an artificial pancreas for diabetics. The implant contains cells that produce insulin, and it's shaped like a hockey puck. Doctors hook it up to blood vessels in the abdomen. It's been successful in dogs, but human trials are at least two years away. A major study concludes that the so-called birthing centers are a safe and low-cost alternative for pregnant women. 
Researchers at Columbia University followed 12,000 women who opted for birth centers. They found that moms and their babies do just as well as those who go to hospitals. The study also found that cesarean sections are far less likely at birthing centers where midwives rather than doctors usually deliver the babies. On a matter concerning older children, the Food and Drug Administration has approved a new drug to help bedwetting. It's estimated that 7 million children wet their beds, but this new drug called DDAVP, which is a nasal spray, offers hope of drier nights. There were only a few nights that I was really dry. I felt like a baby, because babies mostly wet and older kids mostly don't. He was a terribly unhappy child. He was frustrated. He would get angry fast. If something would go wrong, he felt, well, it's just me. I have this problem. I have all these problems. I can't do anything right and would come out in almost anything he did. But researchers have made dramatic strides in treating bedwetting. They realize in most cases the problem is not psychological as thought for years, but physical, often caused by a deficient hormone that regulates nighttime urine production. The drug corrects the hormone level with minimal side effects, including headache and nasal irritation. Studies would tend to support that anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of children given the trial of this medicine, will respond to this medicine. The new drug for bedwetting is available through your pediatrician. And finally, a tip that may help you keep your New Year's resolution. Think small. Psychologists advise setting only one goal and be flexible. You'll have more luck if you realize you may slip up. The key is to give yourself a break and keep trying. Surveys show that 70% of all New Year's resolutions are health-related. How many times have you said to yourself, I'm going to start an exercise program? I was just going to say, smoking. lose weight or something. That's, right. That's the thing. I always set three goals. Well, see, too, too many. many. One and <laughs> persevere. All right. Thank you, Marilyn. Joan. Still ahead on Channel 7 News at 10, we will show you a defiant Romanian dictator unwilling to admit defeat even in the final hours of his life. We will have his last dramatic moments from the satellite news desk. And then an exclusive report on police taking back a neighborhood that have been taken over by drug dealers. I'm meteorologist Bob Soper, and we are continuing to warm up. I'll tell you how much coming up shortly. Right now, the current conditions. SVN7. Heat. Dolphins. Baseball. Hurricanes. Touchdowns. Slam dunks. Spectacular plays. Championships. Incredible shots. Behind the scenes. Everything you need to know. Get all the scores, stories, and highlights first on Channel 7 Sports Extra, Sunday at 10.30. Hi, I'm Bob Soper. This year, New Year's Eve explodes with excitement in Fort Lauderdale, and you won't want to miss it. WSVN is thrilled to present Light Up Lauderdale, a dazzling celebration filled with lights, lasers, music, and entertainment featuring renowned jazz artists Nestor Torres and others. There'll be rides, games, plenty of food, and lots of fun, and it all happens New Year's Eve at Bouvier Park in downtown Fort Lauderdale. I'll be there along with Florida Lottery and other sponsors, so plan to come out and join in the fun as WSVN lights up Lauderdale. Bob Soper says our weather is looking good. Yes, it does. Look, looks excellent uh, right through the weekend, as a matter of fact. We don't see any more Arctic air blast coming down. Oh, so. good. So New Year's Day will be looks great. trouble well, free. Might be a shower on New Year's Day, but up until then, 
we're going to see a lot of okay. nice weather. Right now, around South Florida, let's look at what, what went on today. High temperatures, 66 from Vero Beach, 68 degrees up at West Palm Beach, 70 out in Fort Lauderdale and down in Key West, 71 degrees. For our friends of Hollywood, 72 degrees. North Miami Beach, 71 in Miami, 70 degrees. at Homestead, 69 on the beaches. Now, tonight, it's going to be in the 30s in North Florida, but that's a lot better than it has been. It's going to be in the 40s in the middle of the state, 50s in South Florida. Then tomorrow, lots of sunshine, except for the panhandle, some partly cloudy skies. Up there, it'll be in the mid-60s. That'll stretch over to around Tallahassee, low 60s around Jacksonville, around 70 in the middle of the state, and in the low 70s in South Florida. A lot of clear weather over most of the southeast. We're getting just little fingers of clouds here and there, but nothing to produce enough any rainfall. As far as uh, precipitation goes, it's all underneath these clouds, stretching all the way back out into the Pacific Northwest. Mainly it's light snow in the mountains of the northwest with rain on the coastline. Uh, up around the Great Lakes, as much as two to four inches of snow has fallen all the way from Michigan down into North Carolina and now making its way into New York, Pennsylvania, and even around uh, New Jersey and the shoreline of the Carolinas. For tomorrow, that stuff's going to continue over the northeast, extending from the eastern Great Lakes, some snow squalls there, all the way up through New York State into Maine and into Canada. Other scattered snow showers from the western Great Lakes around Lake Superior, right across northern Minnesota and North Dakota, up around northwestern Montana, and then back down into the mountains of Oregon, Washington, and extreme northern California. Temperatures tonight below zero up around Maine. Single digits in teens and 20s up over the no rest of the northeast, extending all the way into Minnesota. 20s will cover the middle of the nation with 30s, 40s, and 50s in the south, and even some 30s and 40s and a smidgen of 50s down in the southwest. Now, here's a look at our local forecast for tonight. We're going to call for clear and cool. Overnight lows, 48 inland, about 52 on the beaches. Then tomorrow, a lot of sunshine. It'll be mild. High temperatures, 72 to 76. Boating weather, winds north to northeast, 5 to 10 knots. Seas 2 to 3 feet. Bay water's a light shot. Next low tide, 148 in the morning. The low tide at 816 in the morning. Sunrise at 706 and sunset at 539. Great weather for the Junior Orange Bowl Parade down in Coral Gables on uh, this Friday. Starts, the parade starts at noon. Festivities really begin at 1130. Still some tickets for sale from the Junior Orange Bowl people. And there will be a New Year's Eve star. It actually won't be a star. It'll be Jupiter. Look straight overhead at midnight on New Year's Eve, and you'll see it. Bright star. Will you show us pictures of it that night? Perhaps. Right. We'll try. <laughs> we'll be out there live. Light up Lauderdale. We'll, lo we'll lobby him for that. There All right. Go. Thank you, okay. Bob. Joan. Up next, he was defiant until the end. We will show you Romanian leader Ceausescu's final battle just before his execution. And then, the wife of the man who apparently left his family to be with Nadia says her Christmas was a lonely one. Her story when we return. This is ice boating. This is weather at its worst. Arctic winds blasting you full in the face. Temperatures down to 30 below. Chapstick lip balm was made for weather like this. And you know if Chapstick works here, it'll work anywhere. Chapstick glides on smooth and seals in your lips' natural moisture. It's serious medicine made to help lips stop trapping and start healing fast. So whatever you do this winter, don't take chances. Take Chapstick. On the next Inside Report, Tanya Tucker was country music's little sweetheart, but her life in the fast lane hit a detour filled with bad relationships, drugs, and booze. She hit rock bottom. You know, it's like breaking down a wild horse, you know, and I was, wasn't ready to be tamed at the moment. So what tamed Tanya Tucker? Get the inside story on Inside Report, tomorrow at 7 on WSVN 7. Florida Lottery players, here are tonight's Cash 3 winning lottery numbers. Why not protect people? Keep rolling. Claiming that it's safe. It's an important issue for the public, sir. We're all damaged. If I get a copy of that, I have to get it from the police department. It's impossible to win now. Some are fair, some aren't. John Steinberg, seven undercover. He gets results. Get ready for a hilarious lesson in military history. Wish they wouldn't land these things here when we're playing golf. From the craziest bunch of army brats ever to serve our country. Amen. Amen. 
It's the Oscar-winning motion picture that launched the hit TV series. Donald Sutherland, Elliot Gould, and Sally Kellerman. This is an hospital! This is an MASH, Friday on the WSVN 7 Movie at 8. An ultimatum tonight in Romania. The country's new government is giving secret police less than 24 hours to surrender. If they don't, they could face the same fate as their executed leader, Nicolae Ceausescu. Jane Acri is at our satellite news desk with that story and the very latest pictures from inside the courtroom where a defiant Ceausescu faced the judge for the last time. Jane? Joan, imagine being taken from power after 24 years as leader of Romania and just as suddenly facing the judge who will decide your fate. Tonight we have some startling pictures from inside the courtroom that show a very proud leader who never loosened his grip on power, not even up to the very end. But for Ceausescu, his parliament was gone. It was tough to see if the defiant leader and his wife recognized that, if they realized in two hours they'd be killed by a firing squad. Ceausescu insisted the people were still behind him, fighting for him. Then the president of the court sentenced the leaders with no right to appeal. Ceausescu Nicolae and Ceausescu Elena, la pedeapsa capitală și confiscarea totală a averii pentru sfârșirea infracțiunilor de genocid prevăzut de ar. And still the deluded leader defended himself and his power. Sunt inculpat cu președinte de României în acela doar în urmă. So-called justice came very quickly for the couple. They were executed on Christmas Day. Last night, we brought you pictures of inside Manuel Noriega's last holdout before he was captured. Tonight, these pictures from Bucharest, where the army is trying to flush out the last uh, holdouts who are still loyal to Ceausescu. The secret tunnels run for miles under the city of Bucharest, and here the personal bunker of Ceausescu under his home, where he and his troops enjoyed and then scattered their last meal as his rain fell. Army police are reported to that it's a very tense place for them to be. Those remaining last holdouts have until five o'clock tomorrow night to either turn themselves in or to face execution. That's the very latest from the satellite news desk. Back to you, Joan. All right, thank you. Jane Acri reporting from the satellite desk. Sally? The rash of mail bombings may not be over in the South. Today, a suspicious package was found in Greenville, Mississippi, addressed to, quote, the principal of that city's largest black school. The address was enough to make police suspicious. Police evacuated the federal building where the package was found, but so far they're not saying what was inside. Authorities aren't sure if the package is linked to recent mail bombings in the South. Meanwhile, another threat in Charlotte, North Carolina, turned out to be more embarrassing than dangerous today. Police removed a package from a porch of a district judge, but inside they found only a doll. Still ahead on Channel 7 News at 10, Metro Dade police are trying to evict crime from South Florida's housing projects. We'll have an exclusive report as officers make a clean sweep to end a reign of terror. And was Nadia Comaneci naughty or nice this Christmas time? We'll show you why the new controversy is surrounding the former gymnastics star. Waterbed City's after Christmas sale is a celebration of savings. Ultra premium models and your choice of firm or luxury firm support are just $2.99. You'll enjoy seasonal savings on waterbeds and great buys on a comfortable collection of super singles. Plus, now through Monday, January 1st, every waterbed and every bedroom suite will be specially priced. So start enjoying the new year by sleeping better and saving big during Waterbed City's after Christmas sale. Raycom Sports and Entertainment presents the Liberty Bowl, one of college football's most prestigious events. The 31st Liberty Bowl features the high-powered wishbone attack of the Air Force Academy, led by Heisman candidate D. Dallas, against the aerial assault of the Ole Miss Rebels and their record-setting quarterback, John Darnell. Don't miss any of the pageantry and excitement of one of the most elaborate halftime shows of the holiday bowl season. It's the 31st Liberty Bowl, live from Memphis, Tennessee. The Liberty Bowl, live Thursday at 8 on WSBN 7. McGruff here with Regina to sing, Users Are Losers. You know it's okay to say no, I'm telling you it's true. Learning when to say no, say 
no. That's what you need to do. Learning how to say no. Say no. no. Can make a winner of you. Cause users are losers and losers are users. No. So don't use drugs. Don't use drugs. Winners don't use and users don't win. So don't use drugs. Don't use drugs. If you know a user even part of the time, tell, tell them to quit. Take a bite out of crime. Users are losers and losers are users. So don't, don't use, use drugs. drugs. And drugs. help me take a bite out of crime. Residents inside some South Florida housing projects are living in fear. Drugs and crime are terrorizing those communities. Almost every day, residents see people selling drugs near their homes and hear gunfire outside their windows. Police say the projects are havens for drug dealers. They even managed to get young children to join their criminal trade. Well, now Metro-Dade police are trying to end this reign of terror, assigning a special police team to make a clean sweep in the projects. Tonight, we continue our exclusive look at that police program as Channel 7's Rick Chambers takes us inside a neighborhood where police are trying to keep those residents safe. <laughs> Life in the projects isn't what it used to be. Because years back, it was real good. You could sit out on your porch, your children could play. But since Shirley Stevens raised her seven children here, the drug dealers open for business. Families still sit out on the porch, and the children still play in the courtyards. But now they see the drugs, they hear the gunshots, and they're afraid that they'll be caught in the crossfire. And if somebody come around and get some bad drugs or something and they go to shooting, you have to run out, look for your kids. You never know where a bullet's going to hit. You never know where they're coming from. The drug business is all too familiar to this generation growing up in the projects. Most residents hide from it, but others are hooked into it. You may actually see some kids out here looking out for the cops or residents allowing dealers to stash drugs in their yards or in their apartments. And the reason is simple. When you're barely making ends meet, the lure of easy money is hard to resist. Enter Metro-Dade's HUD task force. Weeks of undercover planning culminate in mass arrest. The horse's name is Thunder. Say hi, Thunder. Hi, Thunder. Hi, Thunder. Hi, Thunder. Touch him. Now, the sight of uniformed police patrols are as familiar as the sight of drug dealers were just a few weeks ago. Wake up in the morning, they go to bed at night, get off from work, they like y'all, so. Does that make you feel? Mean, it makes me feel better because I don't have to worry about all the drugs and everything, and I don't have to worry about them fussing at me about the people that's on the corner where I live that's selling the drugs. But the cops' presence won't last forever. I'm afraid if they do leave us, then the problem will come back, and it'll be even worse. Yes, I am afraid. I, I, I will not lie about that. I am afraid. Yes, yes, I am afraid. Mr. A, what you call? His name's Thunder. Beat cops pick up where the task force leaves off, but the task force keeps an eye on the situation and will strike again if it has to. Meanwhile, the HUD task force moves on to make another clean sweep of the drug dealers in another housing project in another part of the county. Rick Chambers, Channel 7 News. The HUD task force has logged hundreds of drug-related arrests since the program began, but officers say many of those criminals are back on the streets in a matter of days because of overcrowded prisons. Joan. Ever since Olympic superstar Nadia Comaneci arrived in South Florida, controversy has followed. There are even accusations that the Romanian defector is a homewrecker. Well, now the woman who apparently lost her husband to Nadia says she didn't even hear from him over the holidays. The wife of Constantine Panait says her husband never even sent Christmas greetings to her and their four children. Constantine has been with Nadia since last month when he left his Hallandale home to join her. Tonight, the family pastor says Nadia has behaved shamefully ever since she came to the United States. 
Well, coming up in sports, the Canes battle Lehigh in the West Palm Beach Classic. Jay Heiler has it all. And then if you couldn't bear this weekend's winter weather, we'll show you some people who couldn't wait to get into the swim. Their chilly story uh. is still ahead. <laughs> Danger signals for a marriage in trouble. Icicles form on her side of the bed. Lipstick on your husband's bald spot. The milkman begins night deliveries. During the playoffs, your wife has you declared legally dead. He forgets your birthday and anniversary. He forgets your name. She sells your golf clubs. He sells your house. He watches every pretty girl. She watches every divorce court. Rediscover Divorce Court, where breaking up is hard to do, but fun to watch. Get ready for a hilarious lesson in military history. Wish they wouldn't land these things here when we're playing golf. From the craziest bunch of army brats ever to serve our country. Amen. Amen. It's the Oscar-winning motion picture that launched the hit TV series. Donald Sutherland, Elliot Gould, and Sally Kellerman. This is an hospital! This is an MASH, Friday on the WSVN 7 Movie at 8. Are you ready? Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. It's profound. <laughs> Once in a while, you gotta smell the flowers, even if they are plastic. You know? <laughs> it's wise. You're nothing without me. <laughs> and on the next Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, it's an all-star lineup with B. Arthur from the Golden Girls, the incredible Angie Dickinson, and the man with the wonderful life, the legendary Jimmy Stewart. Live, Regis and Kathy Lee, tomorrow morning at 9 on WSVN 7. Hi, I'm Bob Soper. This year, New Year's Eve explodes with excitement in Fort Lauderdale, and you won't want to miss it. WSVN is thrilled to present Light Up Lauderdale, a dazzling celebration filled with lights, lasers, music, and entertainment, featuring renowned jazz artist Nestor Torres and others. There'll be rides, games, plenty of food, and lots of fun, and it all happens New Year's Eve at Bouvier Park in downtown Fort Lauderdale. I'll be there along with Florida Lottery and other sponsors, so plan to come out and join in the fun as WSVN lights up Lauderdale. Time for sports. Jay Heiler in for Jim Barry, and good news for the Canes tonight. We always know and, uh, where they can win, right? Well, actually, it's not so good. It was looking good. It always has been good for them, right? <laughs> yes, but uh, tonight could be a different story. They say there's no place like home, but there's been no place like the Palm Beach Classic for the Miami Hurricanes. Seven wins and eight tries over the years, and Bill Foster was hoping to keep the run going against Lehigh early on. It was a battle of three-pointers. First, Jake Morton bombs in the tray for the Canes, and then he was matched by the engineers, Neil Benton. He rattles in this three-pointer from the top of the key, but then Morton took things into his own hands. First, the sophomore point guard finds an opening all the way to the bucket for two. And then Bill Foster saw him turn in a big defensive play here off the miss by Thomas Hocker. Lehigh will tip the ball out, but there was Jake Moore and Canes led by three at the half. But right now they trail in the second half, 51-43. Game one tonight, it was West Virginia over Boston College, 68-64. Elsewhere, Florida leads New Orleans. Oklahoma is pounding James Madison, Missouri over Memphis State at the half. Indiana, no trouble with Wichita State. And Knowles fans, tough luck is. Florida State lost to North Carolina State today, 90 to 72. Let's hope the Heat spent the night cooling their heels. They begin a long six-game road trip tomorrow night in Denver. Smokey the Bear took care of tonight's opening tip between the Spurs and Bullets, but Smokey gets a little carried away. Better stick to fighting forest fires there, Smokester. The Spurs have been red hot, winning six in a row. Mo Cheeks to Willie Anderson, who glides in for two. Then it's former Gator Vernon Maxwell. He feeds Anderson this time for the jam. And what Spurs highlights wouldn't be complete without a slam dunk from super rookie David Robinson. A season high 34. San Antonio makes it seven and counting as they win by 10. Elsewhere in the NBA tonight, Indiana by five over Orlando. Detroit over Cleveland. Minnesota took care of the Rockets. And Dallas leads Atlanta in the fourth. Well, the War of Words has started down in New Orleans. Reports say some of the Canes and some of the Crimson Tide got in a shouting match at a local establishment late Tuesday night. Jim Barry will begin live reports on the Sugar Bowl starting tomorrow at 5 o'clock. At Tropical Park today, the University of Colorado worked out their Christmas kinks, getting ready for Monday's Orange Bowl against Notre Dame. Bill McCartney's bunch qualifies for the Rodney Dangerfield Award. No one has given the Buffaloes any respect. Before you concede the game to the Irish, J.J. Flanagan wants to set the record straight. 
we look at it in the sense that we are just as talented. Um, we're 11-0. We've, we've worked hard to get where we're at. And so um, and keeping that in mind, uh, Notre Dame is an excellent team, but Notre Dame still has to play Colorado. And speaking to the Irish, they headed for the Golden Dome tonight, but not in South Bend. At the Seaquarium, the Dolphins entertained the players, including quarterback Tony Rice. Well, Tony did a nice job feeding this Dolphin, but then he wasn't so excited when they told him to smell his hand. Yes, they also brought this girl out of the stands tonight, but when she tried to get into the act, watch this. She goes out, boom, and then right into the water. But don't worry, folks, it's all part of the act. Yes, see? Yeah. You thought she fell in, didn't you? Fooled again. Be honest. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, right. Jay. Sally. Up next, we'll look at a chilly Christmas dip off Coney Island. It's the polar bears coming out of hibernation for a frigid frolic. It's Buywise's After Christmas Clearance. Save big on all overstocked and excess one and two of a kind merchandise. Zenith 19 inch TV with Chroma Sharp Picture Tube, just $187. RCA 20 inch XL100 Stereo Color TV, just $263. Mitsubishi 40 inch Rear Projection Stereo Big Screen, just $21.99. Get instant credit, no payments till March, no money down. End the year right, save big at all 10 Buywise locations. We do it for you. You, the people who have made Channel 7 News the most watched news. You, the people of South Florida. We made changes. Lots of changes. Changes for the better. Changes to bring you the best news. Changes for the better. After all, we do it for you. Who else you gonna watch? Wilbur just kept shooting. You know him for his courtroom brilliance. Objection! Prejudicial and inflammatory! With masterful expertise, he has defended the innocent. Wilbur Freeman is a liar. Justice hangs in the balance as TV's courtroom legend guides you through the testimony. No, that's not the way it happened. I see the jury has reached the verdict. Trial by jury with Raymond Burr. How do you find the accused? Examine the evidence for yourself. Trial by jury. Weekdays at 3.30 on WSVN 7. Crack cocaine. By using it, you can lose everything. If you're pregnant or if you have children and you're on crack, you are destroying your life, your children's lives, and their future. With my cocaine usage, I feel as though my son had no future. I can show my son now that uh, his mommy really cares and loves him. You can't stop. If you want to, call the switchboard of Miami for help. Finally tonight, the big freeze across the country isn't stopping a group of polar bears from hitting the surf. The weather outside may be frightful, but the water is just delightful for these New York members of the Polar Bear Club. Despite sub-zero temperatures, these hardy souls couldn't resist a dip off Coney Island. Members say that this frigid frolic recharges their batteries and makes them 10 years younger. <laughs> oh, I'd age 10 years if I did that. I was say, I'd rather be 10 years older then. <laughs> Yeah. That does it for us tonight. Thanks for joining us. And tune in tomorrow morning for Today in Florida from 6 to 9 a.m. I'm Joan Lovett. And I'm Sally Fitz. For all of us on Channel 7, thanks for watching. Good night. Good night. This has been a rebroadcast of Channel 7 News at 10, seen earlier this evening.